birthday, dear Aiden. Happy birthday to you. We're getting ready to head to 131, do some testing. This is NHRA week. So we are heading there, gonna test Tuesday, Wednesday, 131, and then be at uh, Route 66 Raceway in Chicago for the NHRA race on Thursday. And we'll be there for the weekend doing a streetcar shootout deal. So there's eight of us participating in that. Because there's only the one pass on 2.0 since over a year ago, all the data says she's ready to go. So she's ready to run. So now it is to make small, small incremental steps towards making some full passes with it. Get this car back where it's supposed to be, which is running fives. I mean, that's long time since the car. The car has not been a five since the fire and everything's been rebuilt. We've fought so many different issues with it. We feel like we are at the end of those issues and there's only, there's nowhere to go but up. I hope that's the plan. And we are also taking the deuce box to do some testing. So we're taking that to actually work on getting that into the sevens. So those are the two cars that we're taking to testing. We also have the Fiero going with us because we're giving away the Fiero in Chicago. The, winners, the winner of the Fiero is in that Chicago area. So we're actually gonna give that away this week too. 2.0 will race at Route 66. The deuce box will not. It'll end up coming back here before we end up in Chicago. But while we're at it, you know what, the new issue is Sick the Magazine. Ricky is so proud because this is his photo on the cover. Ricky's only been on the cover. His photos have only been on the cover of a magazine. How many times, Ricky? Zero. Seriously, zero. Ricky, this is your first cover? This is Ricky's first cover. I didn't know that. Like, you've had so many articles and so much of your stuff has been in magazines in your first cover. So you guys can't see it behind the camera, but Ricky's crying now. So I brought the tears back again. But so make sure you subscribe to the magazine so you get Ricky's first cover. You've got the Hard Ass 1000 in here. This also has Sick Week in it. It also has um, Streetcar Takeover. So Streetcar Takeover, guys, subscribe to the magazine. Show that you want to see more of your events in the magazine. Hey, if you guys subscribe and buy the magazine, you know what? We will make sure that we're doing what we can to get content of your events in here so that you keep subscribing and we keep delivering to you your car in print. I can tell you from experience, and Ricky can actually tell you from a cover shot now, that your car in print, in Ricky's case, your photo in print, it's a different level. Anybody can put their shit on the internet. But you know what? To get somebody to print something with your stuff in it, that is kind of next level. It's still the holy grail. And with less and less magazines about, no, that's sick the magazine. We're here to stay. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We just got here and we thought there was testing today, but I don't see anybody here. So we're gonna go talk to Sam. It looks like they're golfing. So maybe it was a, a golf day instead of a test day. Maybe I got the, I got the text wrong. We were never testing today, but they were doing testing today. So I guess everybody moved that to tomorrow. So all good. So what's the plan now? Uh, we'll get this stuff parked and uh, unhook the truck and go get some dinner. Fight!
All right, we are 131. Uh, it was raining earlier. It's finally the rain's cleared, so we got the car out. So work on going through the car, get up on the two-step, and we got Schroeder also here. We got the deuce box. Um, there might be somebody else from, I think Grubby's coming in to maybe test tomorrow. So, I mean, there's multiple people that are gonna be at Chicago race this weekend uh, that are here testing. So, and that's what we're getting ready for. Uh, car hasn't. It fired up to get it in the trailer. Everything seems good from after going in the gravel. So there you go. Get it ready, make some test passes with it and see where we can get. Small increments is what I'm hoping for. Just try and slowly build on it. Make sure all the brakes work good. Make sure arm the parachutes, you know, go through the checklist, the aviation checklist on the dash. So there you go. That's what we're gonna do. working and it's drawing an amp and a half so that's got to be right um, I guess let me start up and I'll let it run in gear and warm up and it's all it's warm is it oh. yeah that trans is not cold trying to figure out when it spools all of a sudden it's spooling slowly last time we were here we did a couple good spools no problem on the line on the run where it went off the back of the track it was slow to build boost um, to get up there and then so then now we've done two different things and it's really slow to spool it's real lazy to get to the spool which don't I mean we've changed the the fluid's different, but it was different last time when we got a couple good spools out of it. So now we're looking at line pressure in the trans. We don't know if something's acting up there. They said that they noticed on that last spool that the 
um, as I would start to gas that the tires would roll a couple times before locking down. Um, and it shows like line pressure is low versus a known run. Now the known run is with different, um, different trans fluid in there, but just trying to dissect, is there a setting or something that we have different or is there something going on with the trans and trying to figure it out as quickly as we can to know if we got to pull the trans and um, go down that road. So we got to figure it out. I mean, we've got another trans at the shop. Problem is it is a, uh, a different gear set than this trans has in it. And this is the this is the gear set that we usually run with this. So the other one's set up, whatever, with a different first gear, second gear. Um, so that's where we're at. Just trying to figure it out and like, and do we go up there? Do we try and like, sometimes you wing and then you say, oh, let's go up there. Maybe everything will be all right. Well, but we're trying to figure out what's different because that's what testing is. I mean, try, <laughs> trying to figure it out before we waste a bunch of time chasing something when if we need to chase it, we want to chase it right now um, so that hopefully we can test tomorrow. that like I mean when we did those couple spools that then that's when it screwed up that then when we went to the line it was screwed up yeah I think it's 400 thousandths is how much the con the converter actually engages the pump gears so if you had three eighths of an inch of pull out that leaves you with 25 thou roughly engaged it just wants so you take the pan off a look and you just Okay, well, I guess the only problem is we're on a time constraint to get a shipment out today. Yeah, well, I mean, the PS is up until 7, so I got several hours to run up there. Okay. The other question is, is could we just put the newer stuff in it at this point? Is there any reason why that would be a problem? Well, to put the adjustable regulator in, you have to change you have to change round body plate, or you have to uh, like plug a hole off of the plate and then drill a type of and plug a hole in the case. Oh. So, to do, to do that. so you have to take the round body all the way off. Yeah, we'll, be, uh, we'll pull the panel off and see what's in there, and I'll get another pump ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I guess it sounds like that's what we need to do. All right, uh, you're at uh, US 31 in Martin, Michigan? Yep. All right. I'll get it ready. So what we think from talking to Rosler is that when we got the new converter, the the other converter ended up in the Durango, then that was in Florida to try and get all that stuff working. But we got our new converter from uh, Pro Torque, and when we got it, we just slapped it in, bolted it, and that was good to go. First time we had it with that other converter in was here. We did a couple spools with it at night. Everything was all good. Then when we went to make our pass with it, the pass where I ran off the end of the track, um, it took forever to spool and that was it. But then after all that was done, we did, I mean, we ended up loading it to clean it and everything. It didn't think a lot of it. Everything runs fine. It drives fine. And then spooling it here today, it is um, pressures all over the place. But what, what we believe and also, I guess, during during the cleanup phase of getting all the gravel and everything out of it, Aiden measured the converter spacing and there was three eighths of an inch. And so he made spacers for it and brought that down and got that to where it needed to be. Um, we didn't think we had messed anything up because once again, everything seemed like it was working. Well, what we believe happened is that in just those couple spools with it, it had not spaced right, is that we did something to the pump because we're not getting the pressure that we would normally have with it. So we are going to, we got to figure out, we got to figure out exactly which pump we have. So we're going to drain the fluid, pull the pan. Rouse is going to overnight us a pump, uh, 
a pump for the trans, pull that out, work on changing that pump to then hopefully be able to get our testing in tomorrow. So we just gotta pull the trans apart, have the trans ready so that when we get the pump in the morning and we can do it. We have another trans at the shop, but I mean, completely different first gear, second gear. So it's better for us to try and fix this one to test with this tomorrow because our two days of testing just turned into one day of testing. And the one day of testing is only based on once we get it back together in the morning to then actually test with it. So that's where we're at. So all for your entertainment purposes. You get to roll forward just up against the flywheel that way we at least have one part. Bobby put in the um, the bar that lets us drop the transmission down, which perfect on the hoist. But our projects aren't quite tall enough to get the to get the bell housing out to slide it all under the car. So now we got to pop the bell housing off, and then we can slide the trans out from under the car. But being able to drop everything straight down and with the converter in it, definitely a huge advantage from what we used to have to do used to have to, that's like a technical term. Would it be driving the into here, which it did? See it? That's the problem. She dug, drove. So it got on the, because this would be the converter be coming in from this side. It got up on top of these, drove that gear into the pump house. So there's the part. So it went in there. So that created enough space just for it not to be able to make pressure or enough pressure. So my dad went to Steve's to go get a pump because we're getting a pump shipped here tomorrow morning, but Steve has like a thousand spare transmission so he can go steal a pump out of one of those. We can get the car all put together tonight, running. That way tomorrow morning we can test and test all day versus Whenever the pump gets in, then we can put it together and then maybe get one hit or not any hits or whatever. So he's going to get that so we can put that all together. While he's gone, I'm going to make a hit because now I don't got to work in his car. So that's the plan. Okay, so not making a full pass, yet to make a true partial to determine if with the new injectors and everything, everything's looking good. So just making a, I don't know, as long as I want to stay in it pass, I guess an eighth at the most pass, but to figure out fueling everything, make sure it all looks good before would even want to attempt a full quarter pass. But so. 
go do that and we'll see. Maybe I can stick, keep my foot to the floor this time versus letting off. Yeah, I didn't let off as much, so I'm getting less scared, I think. But it did seem slower at the hit, just right off the launch than it was before. Even though I was getting out of it right away, those were still like faster, I think. But we'll pull the day off and see. So, data showed my foot wasn't all the way to the floor. But corrected some fuel stuff that I could see, so hopefully I can mentally keep my foot to the floor and should be good but we'll see got a little bit I think it got a little sideways at least felt like it got out of it a little bit but then just pointing it straight and went but so still not really the pass I wanted but getting closer I think maybe all right so we are at Steve's shop Steve has a plethora of transmissions I had I have I have so many transmissions I don't even remember where they're all stored right now. So, but they're so we're either going to use the transmission or parts off of the transmission. But I get here and it literally is still in the crate. <laughs> it is. I have not even. I've not. It did not even take the box off of it yet from Rosler. <laughs> so, so it's fresh, super fresh. Is that new or a re rebuild? No, he just put that 195 gear in it. Gotcha. Yeah. He doesn't even know which ones he's broke and hasn't broke, so he doesn't know if it's new or just redone yeah. or. No, this I was running. This is the one I was running in the car when the line blew off. No, this is the one I was running in the car when the when it ran the oil pump with no belt. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So. It's, it, it gets, it's all blended all together. Yeah, but didn't the same thing? The line come off the same one the next day? No, that was a different transmission. That's the one that's in the car right now. Oh, okay. So, but either way, so on the way back to the track, work on getting this back together. So, thanks, Steve. You're welcome. Pulled the data, same as last time, where basically right away I'm landing out of it. I think that I think beforehand it's gonna go right, and I don't know why, because it never has. It just goes straight every time. So I just gotta get out of my head that it's going right and think, okay, you can't let off because there's no reason to. So, I don't know. Something, something in my head isn't happy. I just got to trick it to let me go. Well, I mean, you flipped the car over once, so it's not that surprising. Yeah, but that was like a while ago. I've made plenty of passes since then, but and it's been fine. So, so I don't know. Just got to go. We'll see. Should be. Hopefully, I will. I will stay in it. Also really pretty good because I felt it come down pretty bad when I let off. But was that fun? Yeah, that's one word for it. It definitely did go right now. Yeah. So you're gonna have to uh, put rear steer in. I told you it was gonna go right. I knew every single time. 
I've known oh, yeah. this whole time. You actually have the butts. My sneaking suspicion that I was going right the entire time. Whether I actually knew it or it was just a lucky guess, it did go right. So, put in a little bit of rear steer in the car, and I guess we'll see. Racing's done for the night, so as soon as he gets back, I should be done with this, and then we can put that transmission back together and get in the car and good for tomorrow. Steve's transmission, taking it apart. It's a new transmission with the 195 gear. So it's different than our gear. So we're just scalping the pump off of it that we need and the filter, which there's another one coming tomorrow morning. So we'll be able to use that to put this back together again. Because the idea is that we want to get that th this thing back together tonight so that tomorrow morning we can uh, we're ready to go for so I can't see it. You got it? Yeah. Should we have located a ratchet strap first?
Okay, my side's in. My side's on. Okay, both sides are on. Okay, you got the I transmission? Got yep. Okay. So trans is in, uh, we got the gear vendor in, got to get the drive shaft in, bolt up the torque converter, uh, get everything wired back up and ready to go. So um, that's where we're at, try and get all that done and hopefully have this thing ready to run in the morning. All right, it's Wednesday morning. Went and picked up the trans fluid this morning, came in, so from O'Reilly's. So we are going to uh, get that together. I just finished up cleaning up last night's mess. So trying to give us a fresh start. We gotta put fluid in this, uh, clean it up a little bit, and hopefully get it ready when the, when the track opens, get some testing in. But I mean, you also have Fast Eddie answers here. So testing his car. Uh, you got Schroeder here, he got some runs yesterday. Grubby's here, got in yesterday sometime, so he's gonna be testing today. Uh, you saw Aiden had a really good day yesterday with some, uh, his biggest wheelie of the time. I was out at Steve's shop actually getting the, uh, picking up trans parts, so I wasn't here for it, but then I saw the video of it, and that was a pretty good wheelie for a long time, so now he's gotta worry about dragging the bumper. So we'll see, but hoping for a good day, weather's great, and. Try and do a launch and see what happens and hope for the best. Yeah, they were. Okay.
knew when I was starting to lift, but then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna So I don't know at what point, but like when I went to lift, I'm like, oh wait, I'm not even at full throttle right now, so. Dude, I had to get the cobwebs off after going in the gravel, so. <laughs> this is kind of turning into a, a little bit of a uh, repeat. Uh, felt good. I mean, it was straightest the car's ever been, so that was all good. Literally, it was just a, a launch, and when I went to lift it a couple hundred foot in or whatever, like then I realized that I wasn't full throttle. So I think right at the launch, I probably, not probably, I knew, we'll get the data. I chicken footed it and wasn't all the way into the throttle, so. Um, so the goal is maybe to go 300 foot with full throttle and see what happens. Don't know, Naden. Uh, Greg wants to stiffen the front suspension so that hopefully doesn't wheelie as bad. So dad do that and then should be ready to make a hit. thinking maybe it was gonna then catch but right and it stayed straight as hell but right just just paddling the whole time well i mean not the whole time but it made it probably 20 foot you can see it chop marks from there on out which that's about where i started to turn it up just shook i mean it went straight but like and i Stayed in it for a second, thinking maybe it would catch up and grab the tire, but it just didn't. And then my vision got really blurry, so then I finally gave up on it. Basically just got too aggressive with it early and um, it went into tire shake before the 60 foot. I'm gonna try to calm it down a little bit here and uh, get back to where we were. and pick away at other areas. Um, track's a lot hotter than it was earlier, which is affecting us also. Like I think had, had we tried what we just did earlier, it would have been fine. Um, gonna try making a few adjustments to the car also, but I'm gonna back it down and try to make the trip and see if the, if the car reacts to what I want it to do and we'll go from there. No, I'd go over there. She's getting the cake ready. I'm gonna take Aiden over there in a couple minutes. I couldn't lift this, so I think he's gonna need this bag too. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aiden. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Are you one? Are you one? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you married <laughs> And you can serve 
carpet, mister, and we have a little um, appropriate gift for someone that's 21 for you. All that you probably get at least two pieces out of there. All right. Let's cut it in four. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And happy birthday. was closer to getting down so still shook there so just have to address that but while well, we'll let that cool down and really just wait for a tune-up on it then Aiden will get up there in the deuce box and uh, first he's got to change his air bottle because he left his air bottle on last night unlike 2.0 his air bottle empties what's gonna happen out there well no no it's probably gonna do a wheelie and I'm gonna get out of it. But hopefully it doesn't do too bad of one. I can stay in it and see what it does. Was I pointed straight? Yeah, but you steered. You well, it, I think the car just looks like I'm going right because, like, I'm sitting there and, like, and that's why I just got out of it. Cause, like, I'm sitting there in the lane and it doesn't look like I'm straight on the track. Yeah, pretty straight. The heat cycle is going to push some water out, so. That last run, some a little bit of water came out the back, which is where the overflow empties to. So just emptying the little bit that's in the overflow and blew the line out so that hopefully no more comes out. felt all right. I mean, I think it went right a little bit. I let out of it and then got back in it. Whether it actually did that or not, I don't know. That's what I felt. So, no, oh, went all right though. So when you pulled up, what do you think you were? I gave up trying to figure that out because I always think I'm pointing right. So when I just said whatever. Up, when you pulled up, you were aimed right. Well, that's what I thought, but that's what every time I think, and then it always goes right, and then I get told I was going straight, so I don't know. Yeah, but usually, I mean, when when it's 
favor in that, I always end up, I aim a little left. That way when it goes, it's gonna, like what I feel like is left to try and get it to go straight, so. I thought I was pointing right, but I said, fuck it. I don't know. Every single time I think I'm pointing right and you guys say I'm pointing straight. Last night changed the four link, put some rear steer in it, and did the shock adjustment this morning. So then first pass out was pointing a little bit right and it went a little bit right. Got out of it and then whatever. This one I purposely pointed a little bit left because I keep thinking I'm pointing right, so I pointed a little bit left, so I knew I was pointing left, and then it went. I got out of it a little bit. Just I don't know, habit now I guess to get out of it, but uh, like 70, 70%, 75% throttle or something, but got back in it. And then I think that's either the quickest or one of the quickest I've been in this car. So, I mean, that's a good day there for eighth mile, but so next time it's out, work on a little bit more in eight or a five teen. A 15, Greg said should be a 7, I'm at a 520, so shave a little bit more off and should be good. But fix the wheeling problem, fix the going right problem, so now I just got to put more power to it. But and get more used to it, so I stop lifting. But other than that, loading this up. So this can go back home and we can take the Fiero, merch trailer, 2.0, and the rig all to... Chicago. Alright guys, sun's going down. This will be our final test hit. 
uh, final, final test hit of the day. So we'll get up there and that's it. I mean, we've been all over the place. I mean, we're trying to put a lot of power to it. So, I mean, part of the, the shaking and the different stuff that's going on is because we want to apply that power. So it's like, we don't want to just make it go down the track. We want it to go down the track with authority. So um, that's a lot of the messing around with everything. So Greg made quite a few changes to it this time. We'll see what it does. I mean, I'd, I'd like to be able to make an eighth hit with it and see what happens. But either way, now we got to get this. We'll bring it back. We'll start converting it to street trim. And then because when we get to Chicago tomorrow morning, then we are doing a, a driving Route 66. So we're doing a cruise with the eight cars or whatever that are in the streetcar shootout. So we're going to be cruising with it. So we might get in street trim before we put it in the trailer. It doesn't take that long, but we're not leaving till the morning and we need to be there like 10 30 about three hour drive so we're gonna get it ready before we put it in the trailer that way we just have to unload it and go drive it so that's what we got Last pass of the day, so you uh, you do more than you should do to just try and. I was trying to get to the eighth, and it was heading towards the center, and so I don't know if I made it to the eighth before I pulled the shoots or not. But so I don't even know. I don't know what it did. I don't know anything. So but so shoots worked, brakes worked, and all good. Only that's, one cone suffered. Yeah. So, and I was with the chute, not with the car. So, and that's, that's why I threw the chutes is because the car, I thought if I stayed in it and didn't throw the chutes, I was actually, the car was going to hit the cones. So, but, so, hey, love to race another day. That's a wrap. Uh, we got in street mode, so we're gonna fill it up with gas, load it in the trailer, then we'll head to Chicago in the morning. So you'll catch this video, and then you'll catch the video of Chicago, or, and then the racing action from the NHRA race. So uh, look for the next video. All kinds of good content. This one got you testing and working our way there. So as you can tell from the video, hopefully we make it further than we did today. First time I've ever had a seat in my life. Yeah, Give yourself. Yeah. That's temporary. Yeah. Yep. Good. Thank you. Good dude. You too. There you go. First legal beer. <laughs> Your first beer. Period. <laughs> 